Today I'm going to be making art inspired by the avocado and I'll be using oil paints and I'm also going to be making guacamole the way my mom taught me to make it. So for the painting I'm using a canvas and easel, some palette paper, paint brushes, turpenoid for cleaning the brushes, linseed oil which I managed to save from the cat, and also paint which I'll get into more detail about later as I use it. Here's the ingredients for the guacamole, which is three avocados, a red onion, a plum tomato, a lime, a bunch of garlic, a bunch of cilantro, and salt and pepper. So for the painting, I start out with a pencil making little dots to figure out the spacing, and then I connect the dots to make a pencil outline of the avocado. And I don't always do this when I'm painting, but I felt like it this time. So to start out with the guacamole, I cut the avocado in half, and that's what I'm going to be painting today. To start with the oil paint, I dip my brush in turpenoid, then linseed oil, and then I start with white paint to mix the first color, which will be for the background. And the background is white, but I'm adding a little bit of black to make it a little bit gray because I don't want it to be pure white. Then I use a big brush to fill in the lightest parts of the background. The top part of the easel should be down here so it doesn't move around so much. I put it up to take a photo and forgot to put it back down. Then I get as close to the edges as I feel comfortable with with the big brush and I start to create the shape of the shadows. Then I mix together a slightly darker gray by adding a little bit of black and luckily the cat is behaving himself now that the paint is out. And then I start painting the lightest shade of the shadow. There's multiple light sources lighting this avocado so there's multiple shadows and it's darker where they overlap. Then I do a darker shade of gray where two of the shadows are overlapping. Then I use a slightly darker shade where there's three shadows overlapping and then the darkest shade here at the base where there's the darkest of the shadows. And then to separate the avocado flesh from the peel, I cut vertical and horizontal lines in a checkerboard pattern and then scoop it out with a spoon. And then I do that with the other half after expertly removing the core with a knife. And I do that again with all three avocados until you have a whole bowl of avocado chunks, but don't smush it yet. Now I'm going to mix the yellow color that makes up the majority of the avocado, starting off with white. Then I add some cadmium yellow pale and mix it in with the white. Then I add a little bit of oxide of chromium, which is kind of a mossy green. I use just a teeny bit just so it's not pure yellow. So I've made the darkest shade of yellow, and now I'm making some lighter shades by adding white at differing amounts. Then I start with the lightest shade of yellow and a medium-sized brush to fill in the lightest parts of the avocado where the light is hitting and where the highlights are. Then I use a smaller brush to further define those areas and then I go back to the medium brush but with a darker more vibrant shade of yellow this time to kind of get those middle toned areas not the highlights but also not the shadows. And then I use a small brush again to fill in the parts I can't reach with the big brush. Removing cat hairs from the painting with tweezers something I do often. Then I use the deeper yellow to start filling in the hole from the pit and this is a lighter part of the hole which is still darker than the darker part of the surface. And then I use the deepest of the yellows which is the original yellow that I mixed for the shadowy part of the hole from the pit. Then I chop up the onion and I always wear eye protection when cutting onions. Everyone's got their little tricks to avoid crying and mine is wearing goggles. I actually used to be anti-onion and guacamole, but I've come around because I think it adds a nice texture, but I only use a quarter onion. And now I start mixing the green color, starting with white and adding some oxide of chromium, and I mix that up. And I mix in some yellow from the mix that I made before and mix that all together. And then I add some viridian, which is more of a jungle green with some blue hues. And I mix that all up together till it's a shade of green that I like. Then I use a small brush to carefully draw a line along the rim of each avocado half, trying not to make it too thick. And I don't have to be 100% perfect here because I'm going to be blending one side of this green line with the yellow and refining the other side with the black, but it doesn't hurt to make it as nice as I can while I'm making it now. Then I add a little bit of yellow to the green to make a slightly lighter green, and then I make a little line of that all along the other green line that I have to start to blend it into the yellow. Then I do another layer inside of that of the green and yellow mix, but I've got a little bit more yellow in the mix this time, so it blends in with the yellow a bit more. And then I do that once more with a mostly yellow layer with just a little bit of green, and I blend that to create a nice gradual gradient that goes from green to yellow. 
And then I chop up the tomato and I use all of a plum tomato, which are the best because they're not too watery and they're the perfect portion for a thing of guacamole. And I add that to the mix. Now I'm going to make the brown shades for the core of the avocado, starting off with white again. And then I add some Venetian red and burnt sienna. And then I also add some yellow ochre and burnt umber. And then I mix that together for a bit. And then I add a little cadmium yellow pale and mix that to complete the lightest shade of brown. And then I mix a few darker shades using that as a base and adding more burnt umber and burnt sienna. Then first I use a small brush in the lightest color to outline the shape of the pit, which I should have been a little bit more attentive about and I'll get back to that later. Then I fill in the top part of the pit with the lightest of the browns and then I switch to darker browns as I move further down the pit. And I use kind of a U shape in the way that I shade this so that it feels like a round spherical shape inside of there. And I go all the way down with the medium brown even though I'm going to be going over it with a darker shade just so it has a nice base to it. And then I do a little bit of blending to make all the colors go together nicely and feel like they're part of one thing. And then I add another darker layer right at the bottom there. Then I peel the garlic, which is easier if you smush it with a knife first. And then I dice it and then repeat that with the rest of the garlic cloves until I have a solid handful of minced garlic. And I believe you can never have too much garlic in guacamole. It's just a matter of how much you want to cut up. I use six cloves here. Now I'm going to make the skin color starting with viridian green mixed into some leftover gray and then oxide of chromium because the skin isn't pure black. And then I add some black and mix that in to get a good shade that I like. And then a little bit more black in one area for the dark parts. Then I take a medium brush with the lighter of the two blacks and fill in as much as I can with that. And then switch to a small brush to fill in the edges. And I have to make sure to be really careful here because I'm working with black. And while you can erase oil paint, it's hardest to erase black and I'd rather not. And this is the most nerve wracking part of the whole painting is this thin line of skin along the entire avocado. On sections like this where I have to paint really thin, precise lines, I'll generally try to flatten the brush as much as I can so the bristles come to a sharp edge. And I use just a little bit of paint at a time so there's no big globs and I have more control. Then I use the darker shade of the black to fill in the parts of the skin that are in shadow. Then I cut up the cilantro, which I like to use a lot of. So if you have a genetic aversion to it, sorry. Then I touch up some of the black parts with the green I used earlier. And then I go in and touch up the yellow parts because now that I've added darker colors, I want it to pop a little bit more. Then I roll out the lime to make it easier to juice. And then I slice it in half lengthwise. If you're not using a juicer, this is the best way to cut it to get the most juice out. And I thought I was done here, but then I took a step back and realized the shape of the pit was wrong, so I decided to redo it. So I start by using a brush dipped in turpinoid to erase the yellow parts where I now want the pit to go. Then I redraw the outline of the pit with a light brown, making it wider and have it mirror the other side more. And then I fill it in with light brown because I don't want any lines or shading to peek through from underneath. Then I start moving down the pit again with a slightly darker shade of brown as I go down, getting darker and darker as I go and blending it in just like I did before. And then at the very bottom there, I use the darkest color again, adding a little bit of detail to try to give it some shape. And I blend it all in again, finally getting the pit that I like. Then I add salt and freshly ground pepper and squeeze the lime juice in. Then I sign the painting, which is always kind of tricky with those tiny little letters. And then I finally mix the guacamole together and mash it using a big fork. And I wait till the end to mix it because I like a chunky guacamole. I don't want it to be too smooth like the tubs in the grocery store. That's not the goal. And then I try it and it's delicious. So here's a time lapse of the avocado painting being made from start to finish, complete with my first and second round of the pit. And there's the final finished painting. Thanks for watching and hopefully this made you want to make your own guacamole or paint your own painting or both.